To open our event, please welcome President Freeman Rabowski. Hey. <laughs> Hello to everyone, and it's wonderful to see all of you in person. This is our first in-person ceremony since 2019. Right and in the spirit of the new normal, I want all of our colleagues who are online, who are joining us virtually, to see that we see you. Wave to them, everybody, everybody who's online. We see you. We have to find ways of making sure you feel, and feel included in what's going on. This is wonderful. Before we honor our awardees, I want to acknowledge their family and friends uh, who've joined us today, either online or in person. We know that their success wouldn't have been possible without the support of those family members and friends. And so any of the family members who are here, please stand, and friends of awardees, um, please stand and let us say thank you to you, okay? Please stand, any family members. And Mike Pound's daughter's here with his wife, Ava, came over from Catesville High School somewhere. And it's a great story, they were telling me somehow, they were saying that, that Mike had expected them to come somehow, and they, 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 shocked, she, they shocked him, and they're here. And I'm delighted Ava's here from Catesville High School. This is great, and yeah, Mrs. Pound. The theme of today's program is Retriever Empowered, or as we've been going around the country, talking with alumni about Retriever Grateful. And this is a day for feeling empowered, a day for being grateful. And that's for all of us, and I think for me more than anybody else. I just want to say I am so grateful. It has been the most amazing 35 years and 30 as president. Nobody is luckier than I am in the country at this point to have had this career. I'm so appreciative. And I wanted to read, and, and the, the one thing that, that I was just always challenged about, just hoping, just God, please let them get a, somebody who can really take the university to the next level, but who has the values. And the, the really wonderful news is that the search committee consisted of representatives of our faculty and staff and students and alumni. Give that search committee a hand for choosing an amazing president. And so I had this text early this morning from Dr. Valerie Ashby. I had written to her just saying, people love you here already. And she wrote back, Freeman, thank you so very much. What a joy for me to be with, with you and the members of my new community and family. I came here to honor and thank you. And in typical Freeman style, you blessed, included, and encouraged me in ways that were beyond my imagination. I am so very grateful. I'm so thankful to you and to Jackie for being so supportive of me. Please express my gratitude to all of the members of our team for their gracious reception, for embracing and caring for me over the past two days. UMBC is truly amazing. With more gratitude and joy than I can adequately express, Thank you for being you. Give Valerie a round of applause. You feel her spirit. You feel her. And she is our first woman president. Big round of applause for that. <laughs> I think that's great. I'll talk more. Let's have fun today. This is, I mean, for those of you, how many of you have been at UMBC for at least five years? And 10 years? And 15 years? And 20 years? Wow, it's a lot of you. You look good. You really do. <laughs> and 25 years? Wow. Anybody who's been here and 30 years? Oh, my goodness. Anybody who's been here 30 years or more, stand up. Let me see who you are. <laughs> Listen. So I told Valerie, and she says, she says, you know, that place keeps you guys young. You look young. Wait a minute. So, so just know you look good, all right? This is going to be fun today. I am so appreciative for all of what everyone has done. Feel good. Feel empowered. Feel grateful that we are such a special community. And now give a big round of applause for that wonderful provost, Philip Rouse, who speaks with that British accent. Please. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, uh, Freeman, and good afternoon, 
everybody. Um, Freemans made me feel very old now. <laughs> or, as I say to my wife often, that I've uh, exceeded my sell-by date. Um, <laughs> just let me say a few words. I, I, I don't know whether you're feeling it, but this is actually a really emotional moment for me and perhaps for you, um, because we've been through a lot the last two years, but many of us are able to be together today in person, and that's a really special moment. And thank you, all of you who are unable to be with us today, but, but made the commitment to join us online today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I think it's also an emotional moment for the following reason, that uh, you know, one of the things you have to do as provost is you often follow Freeman. And um, sometimes that's a bit of a scary uh, thing to do. Um, but I'm feeling a little bit emotional today because I'm realizing that in the future, I may not be following Freeman, but I'll be following our wonderful new president. Um, but thank you, Freeman, for everything that you have done and everything that you've done for me personally. Okay, well, thank you so much. And uh, now uh, we're going to move to the pres presentation of our awards, and we're going to start with the presentation of the Presidential Faculty and Staff Awards. Um, and it gives me a great pleasure, and it's a great privilege and honor to announce our awardees. Um, for each of our four presidential awards, I'm going to ask each awardee to stand as I introduce them. And I don't want to embarrass you, but I wonder whether you might step forward to the front of the stage when I do that so that you can be recognized. And then I'll ask each of them to join me at the podium um, to make some brief remarks. Um, they will also... <laughs> well, thank you, Freeman. Um, so uh, I'm going to announce each of the awardees. I'll then ask each of them to join me at the podium uh, for some brief remarks. And they will also be joined on stage by uh, the Dean and Vice President of their unit. So we're going to start today with our 2022-2025 uh, Presidential Teaching Professor, who is Tamara Mendelssohn, Professor of Biological Sciences. Tamara. You step forward. <laughs> Professor Mendelssohn is a world-class teacher and scholar in the field of evolutionary biology and animal behavior. Students and colleagues describe her as an enthusiastic, patient, and creative teacher who infuses her courses with humor active learning, and many opportunities for students to participate actively. For example, she is known for asking groups of students to demonstrate plant evolution by signing and performing an interpretive dance. So we will not ask for a demonstration today, Tamara. Um, for many years, Professor Mendelssohn has also been at the vanguard of the use of technology-assisted learning in her courses which of course helped ease the transition for all of our students to online learning in the spring of 2020. Professor Mendelssohn received her BS in wildlife ecology from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and her PhD in zoology from Duke University. Congratulations, Tamara. Thank you, thanks very much. I, it is such an honor to be here with you all and receive this award. Thank you to the selection committee for the hard work that I know you put in in making these selections. Uh, I've been at UMBC in the biology department since 2006 and the very first course I taught was biology 301, now called biology 142, which sounds innocent enough, but actually it has usually plus or minus 300 students in it. So I was definitely thrown in the deep end when I first got here, but um, I learned to swim. And that is because UMBC blessed me with such a supportive 
environment and really excellent mentors for whom I, am, I continue to be grateful today, especially Kevin Omland, Jeff Leips, and Steve Freeland, who taught me and taught with me in those early years. Um, at some point along this journey, I became associate chair of the department. Don't ask me why I did that. Uh, <clears throat> and my main job is to assign teaching duties to all the faculty in the department, including myself. So you'd think that I would have relieved myself of this giant stressful intro course, but I continue to teach Biology 142, and here is why. So what I love most about my job, and that's really saying something because I really love my job, is getting to the core of a concept. So I just love taking the time to try to completely understand something. And teaching Biology 142 forces me to keep trying to completely understand something, because if I'm gonna explain it to someone else, I want to understand it in every which way I can from multiple perspectives and inside out. And the thing is, I will never fully understand something. I mean, none of us will. I mean, maybe you will. I don't <laughs> I, I will never fully understand something. And that's why teaching Biology 142 never gets old. I am on a journey of discovery with no end, and I love it. Um, the other reason I love teaching Biology 142 is that I like company. <laughs> So I like having people join me on this journey of discovery. The best part are the students who sit in the front rows, clearly love learning as much as I do. You know who they are. They are nodding along. They are so happy to be there on this journey with me. And now imagine if you can capture the uh, imagination of 300 people and get them as excited about something as you are, like the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. I mean, I think I can really get them with the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. It's v philosophically very deep. I mean, no, no. Um, so I'm going to finish with more gratitude. So I'm glad that's a theme, actually. I consider myself truly fortunate to be an academic teaching and research, make me want to come to work every day. But it's the community here, and Dr. Hrabowski in particular, who's built this community, who made me want to come to UMBC every day. And so it's bittersweet to stand here and receive this award from my academic hero, Dr. Hrabowski. So I know I speak for all of us when I say thank you for years of inspiration and leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tamara. The 2022-2025 Presidential Research Professor is Yoni Zohar, Professor and Chair of Marine Biotechnology. Zoni, please stand. <clears throat> Professor Zohar is an internationally recognized expert in basic and applied aspects of fish reproductive physiology and endocrinology. His groundbreaking research has led to more than a dozen US and international patents and millions upon millions of dollars in federal grants. Last year, he was nominated for the Wolf Prize in Agriculture, which in many ways is considered to be the equivalent in that field of the Nobel Prize. As director of UMBC's Aquaculture Research Center, professors Zohar mentors the next generation of researchers, including graduate and undergraduate students and high school interns. Professor uh, Zohar received his Bachelor of Science in Biology and Masters of Science in Oceanography from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem and his PhD in Comparative Endocrinology from the University of Pierre and Marie Curie in Paris, France. Please join me in congratulating Professor Zohar, the Presidential Research Professor. Yoni. Wow, uh, thank you, Provost Rouse. Uh, what an honor, and um, to be here in person with everyone, it's uh, very, very special. I really want to say uh, today that this recognition is really not about me. It is about us, which is this year UMBC's theme, which is so true in my case. None of my research accomplishment at UMBC or this prestigious award 
would have been possible without the about us uh, spirit at UMBC, team spirit, the spirit of together we can make everything and anything happen. So starting with President Rabowski's enthusiasm about my work and the inspiration that you always instilled in me, always and will continue to, the very strong backing of uh, Provost Rouse, always, um, the genuine interest in my research and continuous encouragement uh, from VP uh, Research, uh, Carl Steiner, the full support and help from the Dean of uh, the College of Natural and Mathematical Sciences, Bill Lacourse, um, and needless to say, the cohesiveness and team spirit of all my colleagues and friends at the Department of Marine Biotechnology and the Institute of Marine and Environmental uh, Technology uh, I met and the great uh, leadership of uh, its director, uh, Dr. Russell Hill, and associate director, Dr. Kevin Sowers, who is here, uh, who is also the associate chair of the Department of Marine Biotechnology, uh, and those make it really uh, simple to conduct uh, their, our aquaculture biotechnology research at IMED. And not least uh, important, uh, I, I want to recognize uh, the unconditional effort and support uh, that, uh, always, that I have always received from those at UMBC who make things happen efficiently, including for my recent very large $10 million USDA award, Deb Waters and uh, Mike Walsh from the Office of Sponsored Program. We really drive them crazy and they're always there to help us. Wendy Martin from the Office of Technology Development. Dean Drake, UMBC uh, Associate VP Research. And our own DMBs, uh, uh, Mildred Homa, uh, John Stubblefield, Teresa Freeman, who are just here. Thank you all very much. I have been... Uh, as you can tell from the color of my hair, in academia and research for a long time, actually with the University System of Maryland for now 31 years, and for UMBC, uh, with UBC for the, about uh, 12 years. And I can definitely testify that UMBC's family environment and willingness to step to the plate whenever needed, uh, really around the clock, um, are second to none. I've been very lucky to be a member of the UMBC and IMET family for so many years. Talking about family, I also want to thank my wife, Aya, who is right here, uh, who has always been the main uh, source of all my good energies. So thank you, everybody, again. It's a great honor. Thank you so much. So now we're going to announce the Presidential Staff Awards. The 2022-2023 Presidential Distinguished Professional Staff Award goes to Michael Pound, Director of Environmental Safety and Health. Michael. I know, I know that we all have great respect um, for Mike, for his leadership, innovation, passion for ensuring a safe and healthy campus environment, and his exemplary service to the UMBC community. Many of us know Mike very, very well, and those of us who perhaps didn't know Mike so well two years ago now know you very well, Mike. <laughs> because Mike, over the past two years, has been a critical and integral part of UMBC's response to COVID-19, often providing support on a 24-7 basis. He also created UMBC's COVID training and assisted with campus testing and vaccination clinics. Now, in addition to his pandemic response work, Mike Numerous other contributions include working with UMBC Police to establish the campus AED program, serving as UMBC's fire marshal, and working with students to educate them 
about campus safety. Mike earned his bachelor's degree in environmental science from the University of Maryland College Park. So please join me in congratulating Mike Town. Mike. Thank you, Freeman, and thank you, Pervis Rouse. Um, this is not my forte. I am uh, not that public speaker, um, but I'm incredibly blessed to be here at UMBC where we do things the same way. So I'm so appreciative. It's a funny story how I found out about this. My boss, Terry Cook, called me a couple of months ago and began the conversation with, I need you to say yes to, to what I am about to propose. About to. Hair in the back of my neck sticks up. I am not the spotlight kind of guy. I'm more of a back of the bus kind of guy. And she went on to tell me about the nomination. That's who my boss is. She's always pushing for action for me. She's brilliant and as hardworking a woman as you'll ever find. She's been just amazing to work with and the best boss by far in my professional career. Thank you, ma'am, sincerely for all that you've done for us. And I'd like to thank Dr. Carl Steiner, Lynn Schaefer, Dean Bowman, Bill LaCourse, and John Fox, who all wrote nice stuff about me. <laughs> okay, that's it for this side of it. And now I'm gonna hop on the UMBC soapbox and tell everybody we deserve a huge pat on the back for the last two years. We've all worked through amazing changes and everybody in this room had to do that. And we all rose to the occasion. We worked together to safely shut down the university, and God bless Dr. Carl Steiner, one of my new heroes, immediately began working on how we were gonna reopen. And we succeeded, and we stayed open, and not a lot of colleges were able to do that. So that's hats off to UMBC and the efforts. I'd like to thank the uh, ESH team, Josh Curry, my right hand, who does everything for me and will be a great director. I'm not plugging him, I'm just saying. We'd be awful lucky to have him at UMBC. And Fred Rowe, Norm Simpkins, Will Jardell, and Michelle Lovejoy, who stuck with us, Neanderthals, and puts up with us and keeps us in line. So I'm incredibly fortunate. Shout out to facilities management, the UMBC police, and ABM, who were tremendous partner and they do things the UMBC way and they handle I think in excess of a thousand mitigations from the COVID virus um, and I just couldn't be prouder to work with these great folks and with that as Bruce Perry might hear me say Fire Marshal 1 is 1026 cheers <laughs> Thanks so much, Mike. The 2022-2023 Presidential Distinguished Non-Exempt Staff Award recipient is Helena Dahlen. <laughs> Helena is Executive Administrative Assistant in the Division of Information Technology. So Helena is known for her friendliness, positivity, empathy, and ability to make others feel better about themselves. Her patience and nurturing personality make her an excellent mentor. And in addition to her work supporting the uh, Do It leadership team, Helena serves our community in many, many different ways. For example, she supports the Maryland Charity Campaign and coordinates collection drives for Retriever Essentials. After a number of years of involvement with the Non-Exempt Staff Senate, Helena has recently become the Non-Exempt Staff Senate President. She also regularly volunteers at campus-wide events, including commencement. 
Elena earned a diploma in marketing management from the IHM Business School, Stockholm, Sweden. So please join me in congratulating Helena on her award. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Well, this is certainly an honor. I would like to thank so many people, but I'm going to start thanking my supervisor, Jack Seuss, who believed in me seven years ago when I met him in the early spring of 2015. What a journey this has been, and I'm loving every minute of it. I will forever be grateful that he took a chance on me. I would also like to thank the awards committee who picked me out of a sea of highly accomplished individuals. I am so proud and fortunate to work in an environment shaped by President Dr. Rabowski, his leadership team, staff, students, and faculty. I'm not used to talking to this many people without looking into a scream. I keep waiting for you guys to yell, you're on mute. <laughs> I've been working in corporate my whole life with sales and marketing. When I started at UMBC, I was amazed. UMBC is a workplace that encouraged physical and mental well-being. I was used to having the profit whip on my back and never really being able to completely relax outside of work. I remember when I first started, I joined Jill Woodell's meditation circle. I went to the rack. Uh, and worked out, I joined book clubs, I attended lectures and other events. That events and activities that were unheard of as perks in my previous jobs. It felt like I had moved into a small community, almost like a village, surrounded by brilliant people of all ages. So it already has been said, but this award is not about me, it is about us. I believe that here at UMBC, we, are, we all play a part in each other's successes and the success of UMBC. Thank you all for sharing this moment with me and do it with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks so much, uh, Helena. And please join me once again in congratulating each of our presidential faculty and staff award winners. So next, we're going to present uh, the recipients of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents Awards and the UMBC Endowment Awards. And these awards are going to be presented by Vice President of Administration and Finance, Kathy Detloff, and Vice Provost for Faculty Affairs, uh, Pat McDermott. So now would you please welcome Kathy Detloff to the podium. Kathy. Thank you, Provost Rouse. Uh, it's truly a pleasure to be here today to present these awards alongside Dr. McDermott. And I represent the newbies in the crowd, so let's give a round of applause to everyone who's been here less than five years. For many of us, it's actually, myself included, the first presidential awards we've actually been able to attend. So I'm super excited to be here. We have a tremendous number of, of awardees to recognize today. So first, we will recognize the winners of the University System of Maryland Board of Regents Awards. Each year, the board considers applications from across all the universities in the system. The number of awards received by UMBC faculty and staff this year including many previous years, is really a testament to the strength of our community, the excellence of your work, and particularly our people. Thank you, not only to our awardees, but to everyone in the community that supports their work, including their colleagues, the people that nominated them, and the friends and family that are with us here today in person and online virtually. First, our 2022 University System of Maryland Board of Regents Faculty Award for Excellence in Scholarship, Research, or Creative Activity is presented to Mario Lane Cars, Professor of History. We did not get the spelling right, but I think I got the pronunciation right. <laughs> Professor Cars is an internationally recognized expert 
on early American and Atlantic world history. Colleagues say her rigorous research, creativity, and unique perspective on her subject serve as examples to other researchers. She has recently received the Cundill History Prize and Frederick Douglass Book Prize for her, for her book, Blood on the River, A Chronicle of Mutiny and Freedom on the Wild Coast, which examines a nearly successful rebellion of enslaved African and indigenous people in the Dutch colony of Berbiz from 1763 to 1764. She is currently editing the Cambridge History of American Revolution for Cambridge University Press. Dr. Kars earned her BA in history and her PhD in early American history from Duke University. Congratulations, Dr. Kars. The 2022 University System of Maryland Board of Regents Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching is presented to Lee Blaney, Associate Professor for Chemical, Biochemical, and Environmental Engineering. Dr. Blaney is a committed and excited educator who engages, teaches, and mentors students in the classroom, lab, and in the field. His teaching philosophy is to provide a safe yet robust collaborative learning environment where students are challenged to think critically and outperform what they even expect of themselves. His students describe his style as approachable, challenging, enthusiastic, and respectful. UMBC recognized his excellence in teaching with the 2020 Presidential Teaching Professor Award. Dr. Bellini received his BS and MS in Environmental Engineering from Lehigh University and his PhD in Civil Engineering from the University of Texas at Austin. Congratulations, Professor Blaney. The 2021 University System of Maryland Board of Regents Staff Award for exceptional contribution to the institution or unit to which the person belongs is presented to Victor Fulda, engineering technician in chemical, biochemical, and environmental engineering. Victor is highly skilled engineering technician who goes above and beyond each and every day, providing valuable support to his department's research and teaching missions. Colleagues say he loves a challenge and regularly draws on his professional expertise to find or even invent efficiencies. If Victor lacks particular skills, he learns them as needed. He also mentors students, helping them through challenges in the lab and providing advice based on his experience. Folder received his BS from Towson University. Congratulations, Victor. I will now hand it off to Dr. McDermott. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to see all of you here today. Um, I have the honor of presenting the inaugural recipients of the Diane M. Lee Teaching Awards. I know most of you worked with Diane Lee for a number of years, and I know her heart is with us today. Teaching and our students were her number one priority, even though she made major contributions um, as um, a dean. And she also, with this award, this targets students who are perhaps coming back um, to a, a university or they are transferring, 
from um, other schools, and it was always Diane's commitment was to make sure that all of our students make it all the way through. So with that, we have three recipients to honor. It recognizes instructional faculty and staff for their work with students during their year of transition to UMBC. The awardees have made positive contributions to learning outcomes that enable students to chart their own pathway to success as they transition to college through one of our UMBC first year programs. The first recipient is Jamie Gerganis, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Associate Director of Engineering Education Initiatives, and the Director of the Center for the Integration of Teaching, Research, and Learning. She received her um, BS, MS, and PhD in Mechanical Engineering from UMBC. Dr. Gerganis explores teaching and learning through the lens of the stages that students move through as they develop as learners. She creates multiple ways for students to learn, including active, problem-solving based learning and service learning projects. Her students attest that this approach helps them understand how they learn and what they can accomplish. Students also appreciate her ability to take challenging engineering topics and make them fun, believe it or not, and <laughs> even easier to understand by using real-world situations. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Gerganis. Our second recipient, it's a 2020-21 um, re recipient, is Jonathan Zui, instructor and affiliate artist in music. Dr. Zui received his bachelor's degree in classical guitar performance, cognitive science, and philosophy from Indiana University Bloomington, and received his master's in musicology and classical guitar performance, as well as his doctorate, um, from the Peabody Institute. Dr. Zui is known for encouraging his students to think about and ask difficult questions, skills that will help them be successful in their academic endeavors and again in life. His students particularly appreciate his ability to make their voices central to the lessons in ways that strengthen their confidence in their own abilities. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Zui. And our 2021-2022 recipient of the Diane Lee Teaching Award is Mark Burchinski, lecturer in engineering and computer education program. Mark earned his bachelor's degree in developmental psychology from Cornell and his master's degree in information systems from UMBC. He's being recognized for his dedication to helping first year and transfer students develop as learners and members of the UMBC community. Mark teaches challenging courses in computational thinking. Using active listening and open dialogue, Mark adapts courses based on a wide range of student interests in order to engage them in ways that help them meet his rigorous standards. His students also note that he is caring energetic instructor who emphasizes the importance of communication and collaboration, key skills that the students will use for the rest of their lives. Mark is joining us <laughs> from afar, so please um, join me in, uh, in congratulating him. <laughs> We continue on with some additional university endowment awards. 
the 2021-2022 Jakubic Family Endowment Staff Award is being presented to Danielle Therese Ireland, Associate Director for the Center for Women in Technology. Dr. Ireland appreciates the unique qualities and needs of student subpopulations and uses knowledge gained through her research to help our students succeed. She advocates for transfer students and is a recognized expert in the needs of underserved populations. Colleagues say that she has helped CWIT better serve all women and that she graciously ensures others understand alternative viewpoints that they have missed or failed to consider. As an educator, she uses a variety of techniques to help students learn. Ms. Ireland received her BA in African American Studies and Family Studies from the University of Maryland College Park and her PhD in Educational Psychology from Howard University. Excuse me, congratulations, Dr. Ireland. The 2021-2022 Karen L. Wench Endowment Award for Outstanding Non-Exempt Staff is presented to Nicole Zhangdu, Program Manager Specialist in Biological Sciences. Nicole is known as a friendly, knowledgeable colleague who goes above and beyond for her department and for UMBC. Seeking to help advise undergraduate students not yet assigned to an advisor, she proactively learned the major's requirements and advising process. She has become a patient, caring advisor and now also advises more than 50 students per semester whose advisors are on sabbatical. In addition, she supports the broader UMBC community by volunteering at orientation, where she helps new students select classes and answer questions about UMBC. She is also her department's Maryland Charity Campaign Liaison. Ms. Sengo earned her BS in Public History from Stevenson University and her MA in Historical Studies from UMBC. Congratulations, Nicole. Next, we will present the inaugural Teresa Lupinick Endowment Award, which honors one exempt or non-exempt staff members whose work embodies the many outstanding qualities that Teresa displayed during her more than 30 years at UMBC. Awardees are selected by a committee of their peers and have worked at UMBC for at least five years. This award is being presented to Jill Roundell's Assistant Vice Provost and Assistant Dean of academic engagement and transition programs in the provost's office. Jill is a role model, mentor, advisor, teacher, and tireless advocate for UMBC students. As a campus-wide leader, she has wide-ranging influence on many aspects of campus life and the student experience. She is an important voice for students, and her advocacy is evident as she consistently puts ideas and values into action. She has used her leadership and collaborative skills to create programming fostering student success, including the first year seminars and the Discovery Scholars Living Learning Community. Jill earned her BA in Business Education and BS in Equestrian Science from William Woods University and her MED in Guidance and Counseling from Lynchburg College. Congratulations, Jill. Our final um, set of awards recognize excellence in mentoring and in research. We have two recipients for the 2021-2022 Marilyn E. Demarest Award for Faculty Advancement. The first is Dr. Tamara Bala. Dr. Bala is a tireless advocate for faculty and for diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
Colleagues cite her kindness, her generosity, and her dedication to their personal and professional welfare. They describe her as a community builder, an advocate, a mentor, a compassionate listener. She's also in my department. <laughs> and a beacon for junior faculty. Tamara advocates on both the institutional issues and societal issues affecting our faculty. She's a founding member and chair of the Asian and Asian American Faculty Staff Council, is an active member of the Inclusion Council, and the CAUSE Women's Faculty Network. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Bala. The second recipient of the 2021-2022 Maryland E. Demarest Award for Faculty Advancement is Margaret Holland, Associate Professor of Geography and Environmental Systems. Dr. Holland is known as a kind, generous mentor who supports colleagues' growth as faculty and as community members. She shares her experiences in informal chats with other faculty and regularly lunches with her, con her <clears throat> excuse me, colleagues, and she gives constructive feedback on their efforts. In addition to mentoring individuals, Maggie has led a shared learning sessions for faculty, staff, and students. She's working to create a cross-institutional mentoring ne network for faculty and underrepresented groups who teach and conduct research on the environment and climate change. Please join me in thanking and congratulating Dr. Holland. The 2021-2022 UMBC Research Faculty, Faculty Excellence Award is presented to Dr. Narsing B. Singh, Research Professor in Chemistry and Biochemistry and in the Computer Science and Electrical Engineering fields. Dr. Singh researches novel multifunctional materials, an interdisciplinary topic that enables him to collaborate with colleagues from across UMBC and beyond. He has led a series of multi-departmental grants that have resulted in substantial awards from both public and private sources. A member of two departments, Dr. Singh leverages his extensive private sector experience to give his students insights into scientific research and future employment opportunities. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Singh. Thank you to all of our awardees and for your service to this community and to all who are here to support them today and every day. Before I invite Dr. Rabowski back to the podium to offer closing remarks, I am privileged to introduce a short video. As you know, this community's generosity, strength, and spirit, and commitment to excellence and inclusion are due in no small part to our president. These awards are one of the few times we will be gathering together like this as a community with our president. So we're taking a moment to give him a special thank you. Throughout the years, this year, members of our community have been sharing messages with us about how Freeman has inspired them. We want to take this moment 
to share some of the messages and to say as a community. Thank you, sir. It all. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I, have, I really am so honored. I am truly, truly honored. I have said to Jackie and many of you, to Candace and everybody else, that I laugh so much to keep from crying just because it's, it's just so amazing. Um, I thank you all. Um, it's hard to say how far we have come. As Michael Pound said and others have said today, it is not about me, it is about all of us in so many ways. Pat, for Pat came back, she said I almost cried talking to you. We've been together so many years, but leadership, leadership is about so much more than somebody at, at the top of something. It's about what we all do. I just thought of two or three examples. Um, I watched our new Dean of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences comfortably coming across to congratulate people. And I thought about Pat McDermott recruiting her here as a junior faculty member. And while we've written something, it's a big deal that Kimberly Moffat is now the Dean of Arts, Humanities. So stand up, Kimberly, stand up. And, and then you should know, as I was taking photos in the back, I was trying to congratulate Professor Cos on her amazing book and all the awards. And all she could talk about was the fact that one of her department faculty members, somebody who came from City College to UMBC, and that's City College High School in Baltimore City, <laughs> to UMBC, all the way to NYU, taught in DC, came back here now, tenure faculty, just won the Carnegie, prestigious Carnegie. Give Professor Derek Musgrove a round of applause. But the only thing Marjolaine could talk to me about was not about thank you. She said, we got to give him more support. We've got to give Derek Musgrove more support. Wait, but he deserves what he, she was fighting for her colleague. And, and that is UMBC. That is the point. So you think about it. As everybody came and, and talked about, quite frankly, 
their work in different ways. Professor Middleton, who's that Duke graduate also, right? And, and Professor Cos Duke graduate. So this is gonna go, Valerie, you're gonna get all of this in the video. So you can see all your connections. What I kept thinking about was that everybody talked about ideas and other people. And that is the significance of UMBC. When um, Lee Blaney was out of the country, had been doing stuff with our kids in Africa and everybody else, and everybody was telling me um, he's getting all these incredible offers. And I called him just to beg, to say, Lee, we love you. We, we don't have so much money, but we love you so much. <laughs> and he stayed, he stayed. And so many, all of us could have all these opportunities as I think about it. I want you to think about two or three things, and they had written things for me to say, and I thank all of them for writing them, but we know about Maryland Charity Campaign. Give us a round of applause for getting the Governor's Cup. It's a big deal. It's a huge deal. It really is. It really is. And Chris Steele and Yvette working on it. Thank you. And Yvette's going to be next year. And Yvette grew up here on this campus. I don't know if she stood after talking about those numbers of years. She was being quiet. She kind of did, when we were talking about 25 years, 30 years, they kind of put their heads down. <laughs> but it's wonderful that she's going to be next year as chair of that. All the way to the Carnegie and Carl Steiner and everybody involved in Carnegie One. Big round of applause for Carnegie One. And all of the student success on so many levels and Rose Scholars and Fulbright Scholars and others we haven't even announced for this year that we're getting. But the, full, but the gold water, you know, um, the largest number of water in the country were, it was Columbia and University of Pennsylvania, they got five. But Harvard got three and Hopkins got two or three, College Park got two or three, and we got four. Give us a big round of applause for that. <laughs> And it could never have occurred when we first started and just we're not accustomed as a young university 30 years ago to raising money. And middle class people don't have but so much money. They've got bills to pay. That's just real. Working, working class, middle class the folks, right? So the fact that this commitment, we said we wanted to get to 150 and we're right now, I'm looking at this saying that we're at $180 million for this campaign. Give everybody here, including Greg Simmons and all the OIA people, all the OIA people, awards. And such, such generosity of our beloved Betsy Sherman, thanking George, the late George Sherman, and Betsy who cares about children, cares about our city, to give us $21 million, largest gift ever. Give Betsy a round of applause for that, would you? Before I say, so you know all of you involved in the fundraising, all of these events, we don't do it often, but I want everybody who works with OIA and everybody helping today with all the, like the camera people and everything, all y'all raise your hands. Everybody's involved in putting these events on. Give them a round of applause from all these areas, for sure, folks on the screens. Because what you've got to remember, and staff will appreciate this from their perspective, is that if it goes wrong, we all know it, right? Any event, commencement or this, whatever. But when it goes well, we just think, well, this is good, right? But it takes a lot of work from the snow time days and everything. Our, our, new, our new VP for finance and administration, give Kathy a hand. She's acting like she's been here for 20 years. She's just got, we're very proud, you know. And her first day, she had to make that decision about snow. It was great. I said, welcome to Lynn's world right now. The, right. And, but all of the people here, all of our colleagues working together. When I went to the legislature, I could say, yeah, the, the, the enrollment has increased by 30% in the last uh, years, and that's great. But the number of degrees awarded has doubled. Has doubled in 30 years, which is 30%. So we've gone from 35% to graduating to 70%, and we know where the other 20% are and, and what they're doing and why they left. So it's, it's an amazing story about our caring, our being a part of the University Innovation Alliance. Here's my last statement. When I grew up, and I will say this over and over again, I could never have imagined the concept of a UMBC. Just the concept of people from all over the world coming together, to study, to seek the truth, to get to know people different from themselves. And yet those visionaries who began this institution who in 1966, and I love talking about the 1966 club 
And I put myself in that category only because I started college as a 15-year-old in 1966. Jackie and I did. It was this ninth, so it was a special year. But there are leaders of our campus, people who've gone on, the Dean of Engineering of Virginia Tech, Juliet, was a 1966 member. Um, um, Andrew Sears, who's now dean at Penn State, who was over was a 1966 member. There are others, and sometimes they don't mind my telling them. Sometimes they do. There are people. I'm not going to say it. There, there are members in here right now who are 1966 members, and our new president is a 1966 member. In that, it's just so stunning the idea that that the year that we were born, that the new president was born and somehow destined to be together. And for me, I sent her a photo this morning. I keep in my drawer, a, and this could make me cry, like the cover of the Chapel Hill magazine with Michael Hooker's picture on it when he died. And because he was so special to me and thought of me as his little brother and a graduate of, of Chapel Hill. And so I followed a graduate of Chapel Hill and I would be followed by a graduate of Chapel Hill. There's something that's just wonderful, magical in the, in the message there of the leadership of this community, of the way we care so deeply about each other. Because when we say that we care about UMBC, what we're saying is we care about each other. And when I say this is the house that love built, that's, there's so, so much depth in there. I recorded this morning a video for a wonderful presentation in the arts involving our beloved Maurice Berger, one of our most amazing artists between New York and here who died in COVID. And Kathy O'Dell and all the folks in the arts are under our Dean of Arts, Humanities, and Social Science. We're having this big celebration called Legacies there. And as I talked about Maurice and what he always said about us coming from New York, from being at the most prestigious of places, was that same idea that Freeman, this community is so special. You can feel the love. And so as I close, I want you to remember the spirit of a Diane Lee, a Karen Winch, all of us, Sandra Herbert, all these people, those spirits, my spirit, uh, will always be here. And we will stand on the shoulders of the giants who created the institution in 1966. And for that, we will be retriever grateful. God bless you all. God bless UMBC. Thank you very much. Great. And I'm still seeing you. I'm seeing you on the screen. We're seeing you all. We love you too. All the virtual people, we love you. Keep standing for the singing of the alma mater. And remember, if there's one thing you want to do for Freeman, it is at the games and everything, make sure people stand with dignity and respect when we play and sing the alma mater. When somebody's moving out, say, oh, please stand. Love you, NBC. Respect us by standing. That's the one thing Hampton taught us, to always never move around with the anthem for the, for the country or for, the, for our beloved UMBC. So the anthem, and then after that, you should know I was doing my last cooking ever for UMBC, and you got lunch here, you got lunch coming up, so please stay and have lunch right after this. So thank you very much, the alma mater.
before you eat, let, let, me, just, let me just say, um, I want to I just mention two more names just because they have just recently retired or are about to retire. The first is Lynn Schaefer. Give her a round of applause, would you? And the second is my colleague for more than four decades, Valerie Bell Thomas. <laughs> and so let me, just final announcement, I'm delighted to say that Jackie and I will be endowing scholarships in both of their names. We're very proud of both, okay? Thank you. Now let's have some food. We were cooking all night. Where is the food I cook? Where is it? Oh, back in there, about that way, all right? Let's eat, let's enjoy. Thank you all so much. Ha, 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 ha.